by part of Turkey's armed forces. Journalists in India who recently published an expose on a political group with close ties to the country's ruling party have found themselves exposed and are now under investigation. Outlook, a weekly news magazine, published an 11,000 word piece last month on what the magazine called a human trafficking story involving affiliates of the RSS, India's largest Hindu nationalist political organization. The magazine and the journalist who wrote the story, Neha Dixit, then became the targets of a criminal complaint filed by members of the ruling party, the BJP, which is politically linked to the RSS. They are accused of allegedly spreading communal hatred because of a reference to ethnic conflicts in their report. Outlook's editor-in-chief, Krishna Prasad, was then fired, although the magazine insists his departure was unrelated to the RSS story. Gawker, the New York-based news site known for its clickbait journalism and its scandal sheet style, is being shut down by its new owner. Gawker's parent company has been bought by Univision, the biggest bilingual media company in the U.S., for $135 million at a bankruptcy auction. Six other websites previously owned by Gawker will remain in business. Gawker.com staff will reportedly keep their jobs. Gawker and its founder, Nick Denton, had to file for bankruptcy after being sued for $140 million. Former wrestler Hulk Hogan took Gawker to court over privacy matters, a case that was financially backed in secret by Silicon Valley billionaire Peter Thiel. Some saw it as a personal vendetta by Thiel. Back in 2007, Gawker exposed Thiel's sexuality before he openly came out as gay. Press freedom advocates have called the case a dangerous precedent in that a billionaire bankrupted a news organization through a lawsuit. In an op-ed in the New York Times, Thiel said he's just fighting to protect privacy and that, quote, the press is too important to let its role be undermined by those who would search for clicks at the cost of the profession's reputation. As the Olympics come to an end in Rio, it will be a return to business as usual in Brazil, which means politics as usual as well, as the Senate holds its final vote on the impeachment of the country's suspended president, Dilma Rousseff. Rousseff is caught up in a huge oil corruption scandal known as Operation Car Wash. She herself is not under investigation, although many of the MPs trying to oust her are. Supporters of Rousseff's Workers' Party, the PT, are calling this a soft coup, and many say that part of the blame lies with the country's conservative news media. They're talking about a company called Red A Globo, the biggest media conglomerate in Latin America. Owned by the richest family in Brazil, the Mourinhos, Globo TV gets ratings that other broadcasters would kill for. Every night, about 50 million Brazilians tune into Globo's flagship newscast, Jornal Nacional. And Globo didn't just cover the protests over Operation Car Wash. In some instances, it called on viewers to join them. Historically, Globo has not been shy with its opinions. Back in 1964, it supported a military coup, and the network has since apologized for the cozy relationship it had with the junta over the following two decades. Thirteen years ago, when the PT took power, it chose not to reform the media and clearly thought that it could tame Globo in other ways. On that, the PT has been proven wrong. The Listening Post's Paulo Ganino now from Rio de Janeiro on the Brazilian media behemoth known as Rede Globo. For Brazilians, 7 p.m. is TV time. This is Globo's magic programming slot. Three straight hours of the country's top TV novellas. Boa noite. Boa noite. With the nation's most watched news hour, Jornal Nacional, right in between. Elsewhere, TV news might be in crisis, but in Brazil, more than 70% of the population get the entirety of their news, all of it, from television. And Globo is the largest network in the country. Globo is the first a most powerful power in this country. It's more important than the parties, the church. The editor-in-chief for the Evening News at Globo is the most powerful politician in this country. The Jornal Nacional, it's so influential. It can just change the entire 
view of the country, just one night, one night only, you can change the entire course of the debate in the country. É a fonte de informação das pessoas. It's the go-to source of information, exemplo, with news that shapes the way people think. O Jornal Nacional está começando. Creating a version of reality that people end up accepting as the truth. It's the production of a hegemony of thought, of an interpretation of the facts which presents itself as the truth. Acaba aceitando que aquilo é verdade. There's a saying in Brazilian politi politics which goes like this. If the global evening news didn't show it, it didn't happen. In the past two years, the corruption scandal known as Operation Car Wash has left Brazil in a political crisis. Millions of Brazilians took to the streets. Some in support of President Gilma Rousseff, who although not directly under investigation, has been suspended while others were demanding her impeachment. Globo seemed to take sides. Globo was not just covering the protest. Muitos estão chegando ainda. They would go there, they would say, you can still come. Everybody's gathering around here now. Muita gente chegando pelas estações de metrô. A rede Globo interrompeu a sua... Globo interrupted its regular transmission to present the call as if you were going for a picnic, a day out. Dá um tempinho. Na cobertura do esporte, vamos falar das manifestações que acontecem pelo país. Like, come down to protest against corruption, against the government. And it was an important factor for the middle classes, who are incensed at having lost their privileges, to mobilize in one of the biggest protests ever. This big channel has also the biggest newspaper and has also lots of radios. Journalism should be against power, against status quo, against establishment. And Globo has always had this promiscuous relation with power since the beginning. In 1964, Globo openly endorsed a military coup and went on to establish itself as the dominant media company in Brazil. 20 years later, one year before the military handed power back to civilians, 300,000 people gathered in Sao Paulo calling for the end of military rule. Um dia de festa em São Paulo. A cidade comemorou. No Jornal Nacional, audiences were told that the protesters were celebrating the city's anniversary. In 1989, Brazil finally held its first direct presidential election in almost 30 years. Jornal Nacional backed the conservative candidate Fernando Collor, skewing the debate heavily in his favor. Ao transmitir o encontro dos presidenciáveis, a televisão cumpriu mais uma vez o seu papel na democracia. Then, 2013, protests erupted over the economy and corruption. Globo was one of the demonstrators' targets, and the network finally apologized for its support of the coup. An apology that felt tactical. O reconhecimento de erros, como o apoio editorial ao golpe militar de 1964. E nesse momento de questionamento, at this critical point, Globo was trying to appear more impartial, to say we are not just defending the neoliberal order, the establishment, the elites. We want to be more inclusive, so we are revising our previous position. Well, that was kind of an empty gesture, PR really. Globo doesn't seem to like the scrutiny that comes with being Latin America's largest media conglomerate. And as a former Brazilian president put it, one of the country's power institutions. We contact them repeatedly asking for an interview for this report, but no one was put forward. Some of the journalists we approached directly told us they'd be fired if they talked to us on the record. Globo is a national network. But they say all politics is local, and across Brazil, Globo's affiliates will be influence. The regional news coverage in Brazil is a lot worse than the national news coverage, which uh, is already bad. The thing is, the affiliates from Globo were always owned by politicians. One third of the Brazilian Congress holds shares in the TV stations or radio stations in their regions which transmit their propaganda. 
They are regional oligarchs who control information because they own the affiliates of Rede Global, the local newspapers, the local radio stations. You will not hear a word of criticism against the local governors because the radio stations belong to them. In Brazil, lots of things that are obvious in the world are not here, like separation between church and state. We didn't have that. We didn't have also separation between press and government. In 2002, Lula da Silva, leader of the Workers' Party PT, won Brazil's presidential elections, marking a leftward turning government. But unlike other leftist leaders around Latin America, who focus on dismantling mega conglomerates, including those in the media, neither Lula nor his successor, Dilma Rousseff, took on Globo and its dominance. The biggest advertiser in Brazil is the government. When Lula got elected in 2002, he could put all the advertising money in a good national TV, public, just like France or England. He didn't. He thought Globo would work for PT, just as Globo worked for previous governments. But Globo didn't. They were in our afraid of global. They didn't challenge global. And that is Lula and Dilma's biggest mistake. They saw it coming, but they couldn't react. They built their own demise. Those leftist leaders may have felt that global was too big to reform, or that they could use the office of the president to bring the network under control. Now Brazil has an interim government, a conservative one. If the Senate votes to impeach Rousseff, that government might be in power until 2018. Its story will be told, probably without apology this time, on Jornal Nacional. And Brazilians, in their tens of millions, will be watching. It's by part of Turkey's armed forces.